original super fun and all about artisan cheese and more to melt your peaceful heart and toast your peaceful life. Coming to you from the Appalachian Mountains of southwestern Virginia, this is the Peaceful Heart Farmcast. Hey, this is Scott Hall from Peaceful Heart Farm, and you are listening to the Peaceful Heart Farmcast. Hello, everybody. Melanie Hall here. I hope you're doing well. The conversation today and every day revolves around the value of tradition, traditional living, traditional food prep and storage, traditional cooking, and of course, raw milk products and traditional artisan cheese. Topics discussed here are designed to create new perspectives and possibilities for how you might add the taste of tradition to your life. The last time it was all about, is raw milk dangerous? And this week, it's about the benefits of raw milk. There are quite a few, though I personally only need one, and that is the taste. But as I said, there are lots of benefits of raw milk. Uh, before I get into our homestead updates, I want to take a minute and say welcome to all the new listeners. Welcome back to the veteran homestead loving regulars who stop by the Farmcast every episode. I appreciate you all so, so much. And if you love this content, the best thing that you can do to help this podcast in getting the word out is to share, share, share it on all of your social media. There is so much talk today of whose voice might be throttled or silenced, but I'm here to tell you that when you share content that you like, there is no way for anyone to silence it. It's the sharing that gets it out there. Onward, I am so excited to share with you what's going on at the homestead this week, the benefits of raw milk and a recipe for vanilla cream cheesecake fat bombs. All right. Um, Let's see. Homestead life. It's fall here in the Blue Ridge Mountains. The leaves reached their peak colors last week. Uh, Today, the ground is covered with the nourishing foliage that has fallen to return its nutrients to the land, providing next year's food for each and every plant and tree. It is the absolute best time of year. Tourists come from all over the world to visit our little piece of heaven on earth at this time each year. Now, as far as the cows, we are still waiting on our new calf. It is still obvious she's pregnant. Um, The signs are there, but the signs of imminent birth are still lacking. It's an adventure every day, just waiting on her udder to fill up to bursting. And even then, it can be a week or more before that calf appears. And I'm praying for a heifer. That's a girl for you city folk. We always want girls. They are either added to our herd of beauties or they're sold to another farm to increase their herd. And bulls are sold to others as well, but we still prefer the option of adding to our herd. And um, on a homestead, one bull may be one too many. In the future, we will be breeding all of our girls via artificial insemination with sexed semen. So we won't have to have a bull. And it gives us much greater control of our genetics. We want heifers and we want cows that have A2A2 genetics. And, um, and so with AI, we can do both of those things. We can get... Uh, Uh, get our girls registered as A2A2, breed them only with bulls who are A2A2, and get sexed semen, so we always get, or mostly we'll get heifer. It's never 100% sure, but uh, pretty much we can get heifers that way. And now, if you're not familiar with what uh, I referred to as A2A2, um, you'll want to go to my podcast on what is A2A2 milk, and there'll be a link in the show notes. As far as the other livestock goes, the sheep, the goats, and donkeys, they have wonderful winter coats. They're all very fuzzy now. Uh, They look really ready for the winter. The goat girls, in particular, look like really fat and sassy. Um, Now, they all still have grass, uh, but uh, hay is standing by when they finish eating all of the summer grass. Um... 
It's kind of like hay still standing out there in the field that was never baled. And then down below, there is some green grass. So they have variety in their diet right now with the tall dried stuff. And then the fresh green stuff is lower down. That's their dessert. They have to work a little harder for that. Once they get into hay, it's all dried, dried grass. Now the quail, the quail are still not laying any eggs to speak of, uh, but that may change in the next week or so. Um, Scott actually changed the setup of the lights. Um, still, it takes a week, 10 days or even longer to produce an egg. So we shall see. Um, and the new babies, who are no longer babies, will be going outside in the next few days. They are fully feathered, and we've turned off their warming lamp. So, uh, so far, all, uh, all is good. They're hardy, and they will adapt to the cooler temps just fine. The creamery. You know what? You want to follow us on Facebook to see the pictorial view of the creamery. Scott is always putting pictures out there of progress from day to day. Um, and in less than two weeks, weather permitting, the rest of the inside walls should be complete. Isn't that amazing? It seems like only like last month that I was walking around out there with no walls at all. And now I can clearly experience each and every room. All right, let's get on with today's topic. The benefits of raw milk. Last time I talked about whether it was dangerous. And this time I want to talk about the benefits of raw milk. There are dangers in consuming any food. However, as small as the risk of drinking raw milk is, we still need to answer the question of why we would even take the risk. What benefits does raw milk have over pasteurized milk? Uh, what benefits have convinced so many people in the U.S. and around the world to actively seek it out? Why drink raw milk in the first place? So today I will cover a variety of reasons. Different people will resonate with different reasons depending on your value system, worldview, and your priorities. Uh, but here are the highlights. I'll talk about raw milk nutrition, lactose tolerance, uh, overall health, the flavor, community, environment, and ethics. That's a lot to take on, but we'll get to it. Let's get started. Uh, raw milk nutrition. Many consumers uh, believe that raw milk is higher in nutritional content than conventional milk and which may have some merit. This is especially true when applied to operations such as ours, which are very small and pasture based. Our cows graze every day, all day on grass or stored in preserved grass called hay. Um, and there is evidence that milk from grass-fed cows is likely to have higher levels of fat-soluble vitamins and other nutrients. Uh, grass-fed cow products have been shown to have higher levels of conjugated linoleic acid, or CLA, um, and other essential fatty acids in their milk. Now, CLA is important because... It helps your body build muscle rather than store fat and has anti-inflammatory properties. And the best natural sources of CLA are grass-fed beef, butter, and full-fat dairy products such as cheese and yogurt. Now here is a quote. Uh, this is from a study published in 2006 titled Modifying Milk Composition Through Forage. There will be a link in the show notes. Um, so here's the quote, the fatty acid composition of cow's milk has become less favorable to human health in the last four decades due to changed feeding and management practices, notably higher proportions of concentrates and silages in diets with less grazing. Uh, so and then another quote from this abstract is quite interesting to small farmers like myself. There are financial benefits when you produce a superior product. So here's uh, like the last sentence from the abstract. Farmers from some dairy cooperatives in the Netherlands that produce milk from grazed grass now receive a premium payment in addition to the base milk price so that primary producers can benefit from the higher market value at the end of the, product, of the production chain. 
and I'll include um, well let me let me talk about that higher market value we don't have that here in the United States but maybe that's something that could uh, happen in the very near future that um, our small dairies would be able to have their grass-fed uh, product milk product produce them a premium right now only a very small farmer like myself and others like us um, are doing the grass-fed operation anyway um, all right so this is another link this is from a paper published by the National Institutes of Health conjugated linoleic acid content of milk from cows fed different diets uh, this one's about uh, in more details about the nutrition uh, the pasteurization pro process also reduces the nutritional quality of milk products research has shown a decrease in manganese copper and iron after heat treatment the FDA acknowledges that pasteurization destroys a substantial portion of the vitamin C in milk and sterilization via pasteurization is also known to significantly impair the bioactivity of the vitamin B6 contained in fresh raw milk beta lactoglobulin is a heat sensitive protein found in milk and it is destroyed by pasteurization and why is that important and that is the beta beta lactoglobulin um, it increases the absorption of vitamin A so the bottom line is that the supplemental vitamin A added to conventional milk may be harder to absorb so there's some pretty good uh, science there for the nutritional benefits of raw milk now let's talk about lactose tolerance or lactose intolerance because many people experience digestive and other problems when they consume pasteurized milk but but a lot of them have no trouble with raw milk um, and there's no one answer as to why this is the case the FDA insists that unpasteurized milk has no probiotic effect or any other characteristic could that could explain this phenomenon but the collective experience of raw milk consumers suggests otherwise the Weston A. Price Foundation conducted an informal survey and that was over 700 families and determined that over 80 percent of those diagnosed with lactose intolerance no longer suffer from symptoms after switching to raw milk 80 percent out of those 700 and that is the lactose intolerance survey again that was published in March 2008 there's a link in the show notes and I know it's hard to make a decision these days the science goes back and forth the Weston A. Price survey included over 700 families right and I don't know how many total people there were in those families and uh, they say yay 80 percent right but Stanford University performed a clinical study a quote clinical study to help determine whether raw milk reduces the incidence of lactose intolerance and they had a whopping 16 people in their study which said no difference in symptom severity between pasteurized and unpasteurized milk uh, and also I found it hilarious in this study that they included soy milk like quote milk in their study and found that no lactose intolerance symptoms in that part of the study hmm let me see perhaps that's because soy is a bean and not milk actually it's a legume and therefore there's no lactose involved and no lactose intolerance <laughs> anyway I laughed at these quote studies that are produced these days 16 people and they call that a study anyway but you'll be told that you must believe the science you cannot believe just a survey of uh, of people's personal experiences it has to be a scientific study of their personal experiences anyway let's move on to the next topic general health in general um, there is substantial epidemiological evidence from studies in Europe that consumption of raw milk during childhood may protect against asthma allergies and other immune mediated diseases um, a large cross-sectional study demonstrated a significant inverse association between quote farm milk consumption and childhood asthma 
rhinoconjunctivitis, and sensitization to pollen and other allergens. That study is named, hang on, Inverse Association of Farm Milk Consumption with Asthma and Allergy in Rural and Suburban Populations Across Europe. That was a mouthful. Um, that's also found on the National Institutes of Health website. Link in the show notes. And while we must always remember that correlation does not prove causation, the findings were consistent across children from farming and non-farming environments, indicating that farm milk consumption may have had an independent effect on allergy development. All right, so there's a little bit of science going on in that area. Now, the next benefit is my favorite benefit, and that is the flavor. Many people think that raw milk has a better flavor and texture in comparison to pasteurized, homogenized milk. Um, The words fresh, real, alive, and rich are often used to describe it. There also exists a subtle shift in flavor of the milk through the seasons as the grasses change. And consumer research demonstrates that flavor is one of the top reasons that consumers choose raw milk whenever possible. Yeah, that's me. Put me in that group. (laughs) And I'm sure that um, those of you who drink raw milk can attest to the significant flavor differences between raw, fresh from the cow, and the store-bought stuff. And while flavor alone is not reason enough for choosing raw milk, it is clearly a driving force in my decision, and perhaps yours as well. All right, community. This is an interesting one. I love this part. Raw milk is almost exclusively produced by local farmers. A growing segment of the population is choosing to support local family farms and businesses over the multinational conglomerates. In Virginia, we support it by actually buying stock in the farm, literally buying part of the herd. And our herd share owners are reconnected with their food supply. And they're stimulating the local economy and promoting sustainable farming practices. So that's the community aspect of supporting raw milk. Now what about the environment? Well, similar to the community, consuming milk that is produced by local farmers using sustainable methods has far less of an environmental impact than drinking milk produced in large confinement feeding operations thousands of miles away. Conventional dairy operations are highly destructive to the environment. You have air and water pollution from dust and feedlot manure. You've got fertilizers and pesticides that are used in grain production. They're damaging the environment and the health of the farmers, the farm workers, and some of the nearby residents. Manure runoff into water can cause the death of aquatic life as well as contamination of drinking water. You can have nitrates harmful microorganisms, antibiotics and hormones, all that stuff getting washed into your drinking water. Raising dairy cows on well-managed pastures decreases soil erosion. It increases the soil fertility and improves water quality due to decreased pollution. Cows grazing on pasture reduce the energy needed to grow large acreages of grains. Large-scale confinement dairy operations are very energy-intensive. Now, the last reason or benefit of raw milk is the ethics. Cows that live on small farms and spend their days on green pasture live a happier and healthier life than those that live in overcrowded and inhumane factory farm conditions. Uh, This is important to those of us that care about how animals are treated. When confined in small spaces under stressful conditions, cows will often become ill. And they're treated with large quantities of antibiotics. And we do occasionally use an antibiotic if we need to. But when you've got a lot of them in a small space, it becomes something that's used a lot. Pasture-raised cows have longer lifespans than conventionally raised cows. 
Uh, as the corn-based diets, they contribute to health problems and breeding practices are designed to maximize milk production. And that has actually caused even reproductive problems. Our Normandy cows and bulls are often sought out by dairy farmers uh, looking to improve the depleted gen genetics of their herds. Now, as far as I know, we have never sold any of our livestock to a conventional dairy. They do try to improve their herds as well, but we're usually selling to small local farmers. There are plenty of horror stories and disturbing videos that portray the inhumane treatment of cows in conventional dairy operations. Um, so working with our small farm or another one that's in your area assures you, the compassionate consumer, that the animals are properly treated. All right. So putting it all together, any one of these reasons might be enough justification for choosing raw milk for a given individual or a family. But when it's viewed together, it's easy to understand why raw milk consumption has increased so significantly over the last few decades. Consuming unpasteurized milk and dairy products has several positive benefits that for many people far outweigh those small risks. As I've said often, you must consider both the positive and the negative qualities of raw milk consumption when making the decision for you and your family. So please let me know if you have questions. And let's get on to our recipe of the day. It is vanilla cream cheesecake fat bombs. Now those living the keto lifestyle will understand exactly what I just said. For those of you unfamiliar... Living the keto lifestyle involves getting your body into ketosis and keeping it there. Um, and when your body's in a state of ketosis, you burn fat for fuel instead of carbohydrates. So fat bombs become your snacks, not candy bars. <laughs> it completely alters your reality around food. Carb burners are constantly looking for and planning their next food fix. Oh man, do I remember those days. Uh, keto fat burners may only eat once or twice a day and, and hardly ever think about food between meals. It can be quite free mentally. So much of my time used to be wrapped up in thinking about food. Now it's more of a bother that, oh my gosh, I have to stop and cook something. I was busy doing something else. Now, having said that, we do want to plan ahead so that when that urge to eat finally does hit, we can get something quick and then get back to doing other things with our lives. And this recipe will help with that. These delicious vanilla cheesecake fat bombs are high on taste and will give you a long lasting boost of energy. Uh, they are delicious, creamy and taste just like cheesecake. Now a word of caution to anyone not living the keto lifestyle. If you're primarily burning carbohydrates and just add a lot of fat such as in these luscious fat bombs, you will not induce ketosis you will likely put on weight. There is a science to it. Ketosis first, then fat bombs for fun. All right. So what do you need to make these great things? You need eight ounces of cream cheese, softened, of course, a couple of teaspoons of vanilla extract, two ounces of erythritol or some other car no, no carb sweetener of your choice, uh, monk fruit, erythritol, uh, some people like stevia. I mean, there's all kinds of different things that you can use. And uh, one cup of heavy cream. So you got cream, a sweetener, vanilla extract, and eight ounces of cream cheese. So what you want to do is you're going to put the cream cheese, the vanilla, and the sweetening, uh, sweetener together in a mixing bowl. And then you're going to mix it on low speed for two minutes or until you reach a nice, smooth, consistent texture. Then add only half of the heavy cream and just mix it for another couple of minutes. And then let it sit for three to five minutes so that you're allowing the erythritol time to dissolve. Then you're going to add the other half of the, of the heavy whipping cream and you're going to mix it on medium speed for three minutes or until the mixture is thick with firm peaks. Gently spoon your mixture into molds of your choice. Set it in the fridge for at least an hour to firm that cheesecake back. I mean the cream cheese back up. And there you have it. Voila. It's very easy, very quick to make these. 
Um, now you might want to use, uh, as far as molds, you want to use a mini cupcake pan with liners, or you could use like a two ounce acrylic soap mold and you can pop them out of those molds. You might even freeze them and then pop them out. Um, the cupcake method with the little liners, because they make liners that fit in those mini cupcakes, uh, that makes it a little less messy. All right, final thoughts. That's it for today's podcast on the benefits of raw milk. I hope you enjoyed learning more about our homestead and our wonderful animals. I can't tell you what it, what a joy it is for us every single day as we go about living the sustainable life in the beautiful Blue Ridge Mountains. And we love sharing it with you. Now, let me know why you do or do not drink raw milk. And feel free to ask questions if you haven't decided and would like more information. I'm always happy to help in any way that I can. You know, if you're like me, you don't trust much coming out of today's industrial food systems. As much as possible, I raise my own and buy what I don't produce from those that I trust. Having said that, you'll want to visit us at the Farmer's Market in Withville, Virginia. Get to know us and the other producers in the area. Find out why and how we do what we do. Ask questions. Get to know all of us personally. We'd love to meet you. If you enjoyed this podcast, please hop over to Apple Podcasts, subscribe, and give me a five-star rating and review. And as I said, share, 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 share. As always, I'm here to help you taste the traditional touch. Thank you so much for stopping by the homestead. And until next time, may God fill your life with grace and peace.